we figured, I figured and the public theater agreed that it would be fun to do Watch Me Work a lot during this time uh, to create community. We've been doing Watch Me Work for 11 years, mostly in the lobby of the public theater. And uh, so we thank the public theater for supporting this effort. And we also thank Howell Round for coming on in recent years and especially now to help us live stream and to help us create this online community. So what we do with Watch Me Work is we <clears throat> work together and it can be any kind of work, you know, I'm a writer and a musician, <clears throat> but if you're a, I don't know what, seamstress or hairdresser or choreographer, or whatever, you can do your thing. And we do it together for 20 minutes. And then we hang out and talk about your work and your creative process for the remaining 40 minutes until around six o'clock. So if you have a question about your work and your creative process, Audrey is gonna tell you how to get in touch. Tell them, Audrey. You got it. So if you wanna get in touch and you're inside of the Zoom, all you need to do is click on the raise your hand button in the participant tab, likely at the bottom of your screen on a laptop or the top if you're on an iPad or a tablet. Um, and if you're watching on HowlRound.tv, you can actually ask us questions over social media. You can tweet at us at, at WatchMeWorkSLP with the hashtag HowlRound, H-O-W-L-R-O-U-N-D, or you can tweet or um, send an Instagram message to the public theater, which is at public theater NY. And that's all. That's all. So um, great. So it's it's five oh two. Let's get started. Okay, here we go. And ready, Audrey? And boom.
All right. All right. Here we are. It is, that was 20 minutes. That was 20 minutes. That was 20 minutes and 20 minutes, uh, 20 minutes of working. And now we're going to have some conversation, some dialogue. The dialogue yeah. part of the play. Yeah. So anybody have a question? Yeah. Okay. All right. Faye's got a question. All right, Faye. Go for it, Faye. Oh, hold on. Got to click you again. Uh oh. Uh, hello. Faye, are you there? Face. I see face. Hi. There Hi. you are. Can you hear me now? Hi. So thank you uh, for all this. My question is um, about how to like get into the emotion, how to feel like what your characters are feeling, especially when they're unpleasant feelings. Like I find myself avoiding um, experiencing their emotions fully. And I feel like I probably need to if I'm going to be writing their lines. Although mm -hmm. I can watch and enjoy a play and hear it without necessarily feeling it fully. So maybe I don't have to. I'm not, I'm not an actor or anything. So I'm not used to like, like feeling everything really intensely. So I just wanted to hear some. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. So you have some, you're writing a play and you have some characters who are feeling things and doing things um, that are not really things that you in your day to day would feel and do, correct? Yeah, and so I'm um, saying yes. I mean, I just want to make sure that I heard you correctly. Um, and um, you want to talk about how we can get you into feeling some of those feelings that your characters are feeling, especially if they're unpleasant. Yes? Yeah, I imagine that we talked a little bit about with someone about this yesterday that your character, oh, it was Crystal, your characters from New Jersey, your characters are probably feeling things that you actually do feel my guess there's a part of you that might well because they're coming the characters are coming you know out of you even if they're based on some historical figure you know or some real person they're kind of coming through you right you chose them to you chose to focus on them for a reason and they might be more uh, they might be closer to you than you think you know, Faye, they might be more related to you than you think. We were talking about there is no I in team, but there is a me and enemy. And there might be aspects of them that are, sorry, there's German going on. My husband's talking to his family. Durham, close the door. Um, there might be aspects of them that are closer to you, more familiar to you than you might be comfortable admitting. So I would say embrace them. Um, you know, walk around in their shoes, relish them, try on something new. You know, you ever go to a store and like try on an article of clothing that like you would never buy, but it's fun to like see yourself in it. Um, and you don't have to be an actor to do this, you know, although actors are more experienced. And does that make any sense? Can't hear you. Unmute yourself. Can you unmute yourself? There you go. Sorry, I was, um, yeah. So yes, it does make sense. And yes, I have experienced some of these things. I mean, I've experienced them, so I'm not like, so that, like the re-experiencing um, is not necessarily pleasant. I mean, I can write the words, but do I have to actually like feel it as a writer? Like, do I need to experience the trauma that a, 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 a character feels? Uh, oh, uh, um, no, and I, I don't, I think, I, I, I do believe that um, while Shakespeare may have wanted to avenge somebody, he didn't actually go and kill somebody. Or if he did, he didn't die doing it. You know what I mean? You know? Um, so I think he, he, he went there to a certain extent. He felt the feelings, but he didn't actually have to experience the trauma um, of his fool being hung or whatever, you know, in Lear. Um, I think we can, as writers, as artists, we can approach those situations of course we don't have to actually live them uh, to write about them beautifully and brilliantly and meaningfully you know so go there i mean you're not gonna, i don't you're not gonna get stuck there is what i'm trying to tell you Faye. you know if you do it if you do it right you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna just move through it you're gonna write and you're gonna you're gonna catch and release you know you're gonna catch this feeling experience it and then let it go you know Okay, so you, I don't think you're going to get stuck there, you know. Right. So okay. Go, go for it. Go for it. Definitely. All right. 
Thank you. Okay, Kat thank you, Faye. Thanks, Faye. Thanks for joining. All right, up next we've got Bob. Bob, hello. are you with us? Hey, Bob. People hear me, hello. hello. Hey, Bob. Hey, Bob. Uh, a question kind of related to that is, uh, if your approach is or would be different, if you were writing characters, say in a genre like fantasy or, or, or horror, where they're not technically human, like they're not real, whether they're mm -hmm. vampire, or, you know, they're, they're not people you meet on the street, not people like us. I'm wondering if your approach, if you ever work that way, if your approach is different and if, what your thoughts would be in still trying to get a reality of character out of people, you know, or characters who aren't, you know, human flesh and bone in that traditional sense. Right. I, I would try, I would try going about it the same way. I mean, I think of my favorite vampire, I mean, movies mostly, you know, or my favorite superhero movies or my favorite, you know, the Incredibles or whatever it is, those folks aren't typically human or maybe human at all, like Wolverine, I don't know, or, you know, the X-Men or whatever. Those folks aren't human really. Um, but, uh, they have a lot of attributes that we consider to be human. So I think a lot of those attributes can be employed and utilized to create well-rounded and interesting characters. Does that make sense, Bob? I mean, yeah. So just, I mean, just the vampire falls in love, you know, the, the alien creature wants to go home, you know, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so we, just yeah. curious, if like, say you were writing a character who, for instance, was immortal. You know, just say death was right. off the table. Right. Would you just as a hypothetical treat that character differently, think about it differently, or just go about it as someone who still has anxiety, fears, and desires, just death isn't one of them? Well, yeah, exactly. That's exactly right. Death isn't one of them. Um, like maybe, you know, a character, we have a character who, let's just say, you know, a character these days who racial profiling isn't isn't going to be really something that's going to be going on, or, you know, in a negative way. Does that character have fears and anxieties and hangups and perhaps hypochondria and worried about his bank account and, you know, but he doesn't wake up in the morning going, shit, if I walk out in the park and sit too close to a friend who looks the same skin color as me, I'm going to be racially profiled. No. So... Just because something is off the table doesn't mean that other things aren't on the table as you so well already realized. Yeah, so make them obsessed with other things that might seem interesting to you. Great. Yeah. Thank you. And also the implications of what that thing being off the table means to them. Do they know people who, who are not immortal? And so do they kind of wonder, gosh, how, you know, how do I live my life, my immortal life surrounded by some friends who are immortal and have to worry about that. How do I live my life where racial profiling, negative racial profiling isn't part of my day to day, but I have friends who have to deal with that. Just, you know, think about it in terms of stuff that we actually have to deal with every day. Great, thank you. Thank you, good question. Thanks, Bob. Um, all right, up next we've got Emma. Go for it, Emma. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Cool. Hi. Um, thank you so much. I, I've been like coming in and out of this. So I apologize in advance if someone has already asked this question um, and you've already answered it. But uh, my question is kind of around like doing the right thing in my writing because I feel like a lot of responsibility to put something out into the world that like ideally is in line with my values and accomplishes something in terms of social justice and like making the world uh -oh. Please. Okay. I'm so afraid that. Oh, no. Can you still hear me? Yes. You froze for a minute, but I think you said better while you were frozen. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have like, I have a lot of fears, especially around like writing characters different for me because I'm afraid of misrepresenting someone in a harmful way. Uh, and I have the same fears about writing just from my own experience because I've been in writing circles where I've told a story and someone said like, that's really interesting, but I would not like put that out into the world because it could be very damaging to someone who might've had a similar experience, but had like experienced it differently. Um, and so I guess like my, my main thing is I'm trying to write something that explores an ethical gray area 
that is coming from my own experience, but I'm really worried that in writing something that is not like safe, that is like, I guess like provocative in some way or asking questions that it's asking the wrong questions or that it'll have unintended consequences and that I will put something into the world that I didn't mean to. Um, and so I guess I was just wondering if you have advice on navigating that. Mm -hmm. You have a, it's an interesting question. It's a great question, Emma, a great thing to talk about. Um, number one, I mean, you have the police are very much in your uh, consciousness, you know, just, I'm just saying. So you started your question by saying, I'm sorry if I ask a question that someone's already asked, <laughs> you know, number one, everybody should know it's okay. You can ask a question that somebody, if you had asked Bob's question, we would talk about it. Okay. So, but you're in a, in a writer's group where if you write about somebody who's like, not you, right. They're like, uh Oh, be careful. You don't know enough to write about that person. And if you write about someone who is you, they're like, whoa, you know, you gotta, if you put it out in the world that way, you might hurt someone, even though it's from your own experience. The police are very much in your head. Yeah. Very much. Um, and that, that's like, I, 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 I'm, I'm feeling for you because that's really hard. I would say um, it's it's one thing to write about someone who's like not you. That's one. That's a whole other thing. But let's just take you. You're writing about yeah. your own experience, your own thing, how you was something that you might have gone through, whatever. And people are like, you can't say that. <laughs> someone who may be in Saskatchewan who went through the same thing might be hurt. Their feelings might be hurt. You might like ruin their day. Yeah. Look, um, I would say Emma, write it you know, um, because it's coming from an honest place. And, and the thing is, it's like, for example, like black people, you know, one black person shouldn't be thought of as speaking for all black people. They used to believe they used to, they, whoever they are, people used to believe that I used to go on, uh, do interviews and stuff. And people would say, what do black people think about? I'd say what? Y'all are crazy. You know? <laughs> You know, there's like Condoleezza Rice and there's Oprah and, you know, and there's all these other people in between. Um, but the idea that one should speak for the entirety is a is a um, an unfortunate equation that someone made up to limit what you have to say. And so you can put disclaimers in there. A character can say in the middle of your play or novel or whatever, I'm not sure what you're writing. Hey, it was like this for me. It's not like that for everybody, you know. They can, yeah. you can have some some reality check kind of disclaimers in there if you want, but to 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 encourage you to shut down your story because it the the tr your truth might hurt somebody's feelings is a tricky place to go. So I would say go out there with it if you're going to hurt somebody's feelings. Hopefully they'll go to your play with a friend and they can talk about it afterwards. Okay. <laughs> Not Thank you. about what you're writing about. Do you see what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. Because it's your story. Now it's different if it's somebody else, you know, all that kind of, that's a whole different conversation. But if you're talking yeah. about your own self, you know, I would want you to be able to feel like you can write from your own experience. You're not intentionally going out there to hurt anybody's feelings. You're not intentionally going out there to write something to make somebody feel like shit. Right? Right. Right. I mean, or you, maybe you are, I don't think so. I don't get that. Yeah. <laughs> no. Okay. Cool. Write it. Thank you. And, and in the workshop process, is it a play, Emma? Yeah. So in the workshop it process, is. you're going to get, start getting feedback, you know, and you're going to learn how to maybe, you know, shape it and all that kind of stuff, but don't stop writing just because it might be harmful to somebody in some audience at some point somewhere. Yeah. You know, okay. definitely. Okay, so go. Yeah, take some steps forward. I would suggest. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Emma. Good luck Thanks. with your writing. Thanks, Emma. Thank you. Um, up next we've got Marlene. Oh, oh, I hear you. Hello. Hi. Hey, hey Marlene. Hey, Marlene. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for taking another question and happy Friday. Happy Friday. Um, so I want to talk about short form mm -hmm. and um, 
I, so I really love short form and by short form, I mean something that's a page or less or um, two minutes or less mm -hmm. performance wise, because mm. I, I find in my own work, like there's kind of a wildness that comes with this constraint that I miss a little bit when I have to be in the rehearsal process for something that I've been with a long time. Mm -hmm. And I know you did the 365 plays. Mm -hmm. So I have a thing where I love doing this, but I have a longevity issue in that if I set, I'm like, I'm gonna do this one for one every day for 30 days. Mm -hmm. And then about day five, I'm like, oh, I don't know. But I, I love them and I'd like to do I really want to do this commitment to see like how far I can push this in 30 days or 45 days or 40 days, whatever it is. So I wondered if you had any insight or advice about basically sticking, I, I stick with other things, but somehow this short form too, I've never been able to stick with. I think in a way, because when people read them, they're like, oh great, we want more. Why don't you write a whole thing about this? And my response is always like, no, this is it. This is what you get. And then maybe all of them as a whole will be something. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but you're, you're saying two different things, though. You're saying that. I know. You're, you're, That's also the hard part. <laughs> right. So you're saying that, you you know, to, to stick with something is difficult. And then when people read it, they like it and they encourage you and you say, no, this is it. So those are two actually separate things. Mm -hmm. So which do you want to do? Do you want to do a marathon thing or do you want to write? You, you don't, it sounds like you don't want to write something that's a whole bunch of plays centered around a thing. I, I'm not, I'm not sure what you want to accomplish. Well, maybe that's the question until I know what I want to accomplish. Just well, no, I mean, it. I mean, just no, that, see that, 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 see, that's taking it to the land place. Yeah, I didn't say take it to the man place. I just said get clear, you know? Yes. Um, maybe you write them when you feel like writing them. Yes. I mean, I'm a, you know, cool. I'm a long, a long distance, you know, ultra marathoner. So, I mean, not right. my, my, you know, I don't, if I were a marathon, I'd be a long distance ultra marathoner, but I'm not a marathon. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, write them when you feel like. I mean, that's the thing okay. you're saying, you're saying this is all there is. So why are you getting hung up about not doing 30 in a row? Yeah, I don't know. Thank you. Right. Thank just, you. Ju just write when you feel, you know, if you feel like writing one today, write one today. If you don't feel like writing one tomorrow, that's okay. Cool. Remember Thanks. your own mantra. This is all there is. Right. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. you write one on uh, Sunday, you know? It, yeah. it, it, it's tricky. You have to just write them when you feel like, and that's, I think it's going to be great because you love the short form. You know, some people don't love the short form at all. So. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marlene. All right. Up next, we've got Eric. Eric, are you there? Hi. Hi. Hello. Um, so it's like a weird question conversation kind of maybe. Um, so look, I, I do, I write a lot of uh, monologue specifically uh -huh. that sometimes borders on like spoken word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I run, a, I run into this issue a lot and I don't know if you've ever written something similar to this where you write it and you're like, I really should be the one to say this. But you're like, then you keep writing it or there's parts of it where you're like, no, like this is meant to be I, I, I see this on a stage and someone else is speaking this part and there's other people involved on the stage and there's a setting and there's somewhere for them to be. And I don't know, it, sometimes it's like, do I need to get over this fear of speaking my own words? Or do I need to format the piece differently so it doesn't feel like something that I can just jump right into? Do you wanna be on stage, Eric? Like, no. I'm looking at you. No, are you sure? I'm trying to see your. I mean, like sometimes, and so, I mean, some pieces I have that I know specifically, like that are more definitely spoken word or a piece of poetry that I'm like, I definitely would want this to come from my mouth. But uh -huh. most of the time, I'm like, no, this belongs over there, and like, I want to, uh -huh. I want, you, I want to watch it in a way. Uh huh. Uh huh. And I want to like, there's that part where you're like, I want to forget that I was a part of this and watch it abstract. Uh -huh. 
Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I think that's your answer. If I mean if you if you start out by going, oh, this should be fun to say, and then nah, actually I wanna I, I'd rather watch other people say it. Yeah. I think that's I think that's it. I think that's you know, there are definitely things that I write that I wanna say. And then I mean mostly like songs for my band. I, I write them for me and my band to perform, but plays and uh, you know, screenplays and teleplays and stuff I write for for actors and whatnot you know and I, I delight in working with really great actors or even not so great actors <laughs> you know um, but that's also the thing where I'm sometimes like this whole piece has an emotion that's really important to me that it's like portrayed perfectly mm -hmm. and I'm like while I would love to say these words but then am I like just like being like I'm a bad actor I don't want to say the words oh. and it's like I'm it's like I would want someone else to do this so I know that I that emotion is correct on on stage or it's given in a proper way is, so maybe there, that's the, is there a place where you could do the initial first reading or or, or perform it in a low-key way oh yeah for sure do you yeah. know I mean it might be fun for you mm. to in a low stakes venue, you know what I mean? Even a, a format, you know, uh, if there's like open mic, you know, online, yeah. if, if anybody's doing that, you might have fun kind of doing it in a low stakes venue just to enjoy, because it sounds like part of you would enjoy being the mouthpiece mm. uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a low stakes environment where you could just have fun with it. Yeah. And I think you should just listen to that because I hear part of you saying that you'd like to do that. So yeah. I'd give it a try and not so much worry that it wasn't, you know, uh, necessarily Broadway quality or whatever the high, you know, high water mark is, you know? I actually never thought about like something low stakes like that. So yeah. That's... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even like if it's a, if you've written a, like a 50 page play and you have a a two page monologue that you really like to perform, you know, yeah. have, have fun with it. I, I think you, you really enjoy it. You seem like you would, that would be a nice thing for you. Yeah. Probably. You know? probably. Yeah. But at least you, you try it, you know? Yeah. yeah. I have a, a little bit of a follow up. is that one piece specifically that I'm working on uh -huh. is it feels very much like I saw something that I very much enjoyed a few summers ago and I've been working on that, working on this since then. Uh -huh. And it was like a very intense like performance art piece. And there's aspects of this that feel very performance art. And it's some, it's one of those genres that I feel can be tricky. Cause you're like, there's a, there's a part of you that's like performance art is so deeply ingrained kind of in the artists themselves and how they're working. And you don't want to step on that in a way kind of like, is that, have you ever felt like you don't want to walk into a space? I feel like a performance art space feels kind of guarded in a way like the, the it's, it's so, it's, a, it's so admirable what they do and not just actors acting on a stage in a play. Um, so I don't know if that's, I feel, I feel, I would feel weird about presenting something and being like, this is performance art and like not being, I don't know, maybe that's. No, I think, I mean, I, I have a lot of respect for performance yeah. art and all different kinds of art making you know yeah. and I know it sounds like you're not kind of just bulldozing your way in and saying I want to do this now you know you yeah. have a lot of respect for the form so I think you have respect for the form and you take steps forward because you want to be part of that group yeah. I think you're allowed to be part of that group just like if someone wanted to write a musical or you wanted to have a band or you wanted to paint yeah whatever you know we're we're allowed to try things outside we talked about comfort zone yesterday we're allowed to try things outside of our comfort zone it's it's okay it's we're allowed okay. so i think if you're if you're pursuing it you know uh you're making something beautiful and you're gonna give it a try respectfully you know would you would you like talk to a, a performance artist and be like and kind of gauge them or is that not well it, well it depends who they are again if it's like emma's friends you know it was like yeah. oh i don't know you you haven't put your time into performance art so you're not allowed in here <laughs> yeah. i don't i don't know who you know there are there are many different kinds of performance artists you know if it's your if it's a friend who is supportive who wants you to succeed mm. you know then then sure um if you just want to 
go and may, I mean, look at a lot of performance art or maybe look at a lot of it online these days and kind of yeah. digest it, then I don't think you have to have a performance artist give you permission per se. Yeah. I don't think so. Mm. Um, and I already wrote my permission slip, so it's fine. There you go. There you go. You got your permission slip. Good. I, I think you're allowed to sure if you if you know a performance artist that you respect and they respect you and yeah. all that, then great. Talk to them. Sure. Okay. Yeah. But but don't depend don't rely on them to give you permission to do something that you want to do. Yeah. Okay. You know? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Eric. Good question. Thanks, Eric. Um, all right. Um, up next we've got Maya. Maya, can you hear us? Oh, sorry, I clicked the button twice. There we go. Hi, hi. I can't go. Hi, hi, how are you? I'm good. Um, so my question was, uh, I don't really want to, uh, I'm really not into one dimensional characters. Um, and I'm trying to, I'm writing a play and I want the character development to be deep in depth. You know, I wanted to, to show that I put in the effort in creating these characters. Um, and the first thing that went to my mind was um, a scene in The Wire where Omar goes to pick up um, Cheerios because the cereal ran out. He goes to pick up Cheerios, but he makes it very clear, you know, you don't have honey nut. And I felt like that was a very important thing because you don't want Omar to be looked at, oh, he just robs other, other people out on the street. He also likes honey nut Cheerios. He also likes to take his grandmother to church on Sundays. That's what, that's his thing. I want to, I want to do the same thing in a play, but you only have about what, nine, 90 minutes in an average, in an average play. How can I build a character develop, how can I develop a character with that much depth in such little time? Yeah, detail, good, great question. Um, details, um, you don't, I mean, it, you can, you can have, in plays, you, number one, you can have as much time as you want. You, you know, you put, you, and, and t actually the form that you quoted, television is very strict with how much time you have. Mm -hmm. You know, in act breaks have to happen at certain times. Episodes are certain lengths. Commercial breaks are, you know. So um, you have to put in details and detail. That detail took what? Uh, 10 seconds, right? Mm -hmm. You have mm -hmm. to put in you have to put in details in your characters and just because a play is 90 minutes or a two minute play like Marlene is writing, you can still put in details details don't have to be. An hour's worth of details that honey nut Cheerios that's a 15 second detail right mm -hmm. but just just put in your details I mean that's that's what you're talking about right. Yes, I just don't want my details to be so in your face. You know, I don't want my character to always have a bowl of Honey Nut Cheerios and, you know, in the scene. I don't want it to be, you know, how Keenan and Kel and how he was always about the orange soda. I don't want it to make, I don't want it to be so in your face like that. I yeah. want it to be, you know. Yeah, go ahead. You want, want it to be small. Yeah. Well, um, you got to digest some literature that does what you want to do, you know. I mean, we could, you know, you know what I mean? It's, it's, a, it's part of the craft. You mm -hmm. gotta, you gotta bone up on the craft. So if you like things like the wire or whatever that are full of beautiful details that you like, watch more of those shows or read more of Tennessee Williams or whatever it is that you, you like, I mean, study your craft. That's where it's going to come from. We, you know, anything can be a brilliant, detail character a detail that gives you some idea of the character or something heavy-handed it's it's mm -hmm. it depends on how the craftsperson uses it how it might be shaped during the table read you know sometimes first drafts don't always have those beautiful you know um it's, I, 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 it's I just, the craft of writing people right it's just i don't i want it to be seen i don't want it to be so obvious but i also want it to be seen and, that, and that's where that's the Line. Yeah, yeah, I would say I would say start watching whatever you like you watch your TV shows and make lists of all the details that you love that are that are seen and not heavy handed maybe or read your plays and make lists of all the details that you love and and start to seeing how other artists do that you have to study the craft that's what you know that's what we do we who mm -hmm. do this, you know. 
Mm -hmm. um, so when we, so when, uh, what's his name? Who did The Wire? I'm spacing on his name. Blah, 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 blah. Fat Eric. Mr. Fabulous. Yeah, no, it's um, Eric. Uh, Not Eric Overmeyer. Um, yeah, I can't remember his name. Mr. Wonderful. Uh, you know, I mean, he's, he, you know, he also did, um, you know, he's a student of the craft. He's a craftsperson. He's an artist. He's worked at this diligently um, to get a detail like that that pops. And maybe, again, that wasn't in the first draft. Maybe it's something that happened in the second draft or at the table read or whatever. We don't know where it came from, being on the outside of it. But that's a craft question. You got to study the craft. We all have to, right? This is what we're doing. It's not coming to us just because, like, we want to be, you know, great writers. You know that, right, Maya? Yes, I do. Yeah, we got to. We gotta, so take a look at, at your favorite TV shows or novels or whatever and study them in your free time that you might have these days. Okay, thank you so much. Sure. Thank you. David Simon. And that's who it is. David, <laughs> we David got Simon. there. Mr. Fabulous. Yeah, David <laughs> Simon. great writer. Yay. All mm -hmm. right. Next up, we've got about seven minutes left, and we're going to go to Sida. I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Are you there? I'm here. Yay. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Great. Oh, hi. Hey. Uh, this is the first day I've joined. I'm so excited and I want to thank you for having this space. Um, I am a theater maker and I, so, so it was a surprise when you said, okay, 20 minutes, you can do whatever you, you know, how do you work? So I also do embroidery. I do all kinds of stuff, but I'm writing right now. Um, I've written solo plays and I am now, I'm also a voice and a movement teacher. So I'm writing okay. a chapter for a book. And so in those 20 minutes, what I did is I was, um, I need to turn in a second draft this week. And so I was rereading. And um, so in this chapter, I'm writing about voice and identity and um, about undoing um, structures, uh, I'm writing about decolonizing my own education. Mm -hmm. I am I am the daughter of Guatemalan immigrants, and most of my education has been in the U.S. Mm -hmm. and in the U.K. And so I am going through this like a bit of a painful process of realizing that when I was encouraged to go away and become better by mm -hmm. getting an education, that it also meant uprooting myself from 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 my people from that I'm not better from my mother because she's a seamstress or mm -hmm. I'm and I am now in academ academia so as I write this chapter um I am seeing the 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 uh, thread in there is this um I don't want to so, and what I noticed that I, I'd like to be able to undo is this translation. I realized that in not just translation from Spanish to English, but a constant translation of myself uh, and my experience. Um, and I don't want to do that anymore. And so it's interesting to do, to be writing a chapter. And, and even though um, I have a great um, editor and uh, it's all focused on undoing and decolonizing structures, there's still kind of what you were saying, a police in my head that is judging. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm still finding myself translating and having to go back, who am I writing this for? Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to share that and see if you have thoughts in terms of, because I don't think we translate ourselves just from in language, but that we translate we're constantly trying to figure out who this work is for. And for me, it's so layered with um, issues of identity and um, race that sometimes I feel a little <laughs> lost. Mm -hmm. Who is your work? Uh, first, tell me how to pronounce your name. Is it? Saida. Saida, Saida. okay. Saida, so who is your work for? Great question, by the way. Who is your work for? I mean, this piece right here. This piece mm -hmm. is for this piece is for my my family and for my students of color. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And do you find yourself kind of hedging or holding back or not saying some things because you're talking with them? Through this piece? 
Yeah, a little bit, but I'm doing it, but it's a little bit scary mm -hmm. to, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's strange. It's really strange because there's like, you learn how to write things in a certain way. And then I feel like, wait, this is not how we talk. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is not, if I really want my mom to understand this chapter, if I really want, um, students to not uh, translate themselves the way I felt I had to translate myself mm -hmm. in 20 years ago when I was a student in theater programs or when I, you know, um, yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Could you include lines like that in your piece? <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's what I mean. The, the the caveat, the the disclaimer that we're talking to Emma about. Mm -hmm. If I in mm -hmm. italics, you know, if I really want, if we really wanted my mom to understand this piece, I would say this. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Yeah. Because you know, you have to think about what is my relationship with the police. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and, and you know, either you're like. You know, different people have different relationships with the police. And those of us who have that double or triple or quadruple consciousness are always having multiple conversations as we interact with the police. And in your piece, you can have multiple conversations. Um, you know, the publisher might need something. Your audience might need something else. There's no reason why your piece can't include both or more than two things or, you know, multiple, multiple um, voices, if you will. Yeah. You know, um, there's a line in, in my play, The Death of the Last Black Man in the Whole Entire World, aka The Negro Book of the Dead, that says, it will be for us, but you will mention them from time to time. Disclaimer. Yeah. <laughs> right just right in there it's one of the yeah. refrains in the play that the characters say over and over you know and that's how we speak we just we have we have just multiple tongues multiple consciousnesses consciousnesses <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah so you can structure your piece on the page you know to incorporate all those levels all those places where your mind has to go just to keep itself together mm -hmm. and that is valid and that is good and you have permission <laughs> thank you and that's what and you have permission whether or not you're a poc or not or this you know it's not about like oh i don't have permission because i'm not a you know woman from black you know what it's not about that Mm -hmm. if we're giving everybody permission once we start giving everybody permission once we start saying hey guess what you're free <laughs> and so are you and so are you and it, i don't care where you're from or who you are or who your ancestors were or weren't or whatever that's yeah. a very powerful thing and it's also destabilizing because now i can't claim it all i have to give it away and there's something very powerful about that yeah. And I have a feeling that it's good. I, but I know for sure that it's Friday and it's 6.01. It's 6.01. It's 6.01. It's <laughs> and it's Friday. Because, do we say what, what next week is going to look like, Audrey? Or do I we, think we should. We do, next week. So this is what we're going we're gonna to be. We're going to be exploring um, various ways of being. And one of the fun things... We have a lot of people in the public theater family, a lot of my friends, colleagues, comrades, people I love and people who are very excited about Watch Me Work. We're going to invite them on the show. So we're going to basically we're going to be having folks on the show who are going to talk a little bit about their work, just a smidge, just to kind of get you up to speed on what they're doing. And then they're going to take questions from you. I'll still be here hanging out a um, um, couple days a week. It's just going to be me and you just like this. And a couple days a week, I'm going to invite on one of my dear friends, comrades, compatriots to join us in this. So you can get a, a variety of perspectives. 
um, not, and not just mine, although, you know, mine is so great. Yours but, is you know, the best. Mine is the best, but you know, we have, <laughs> we have people who, who want to share and I want you to hear from other people too. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing uh, starting next week. And should we, do we have announcements about who's going to Yeah, be I can tell you a couple of them. A couple of them I'm going to keep to us, but we'll tell you later. Um, so usually we're going to have guests Tuesday and Thursdays. Uh, one other thing to say is that we're going to be going Monday to Thursday now with Fridays off because it's the summer, basically. And the public uh, theater has Fridays off, basically. So basically. We're Fridays off. Sorry. Okay. No, no, um, no. That's right. <laughs> Um, so, um, but to kick us off, we're actually going to have a Monday guest. It's going to be Oscar Eustace. Because he's so uh, special. He's so special. And then on Tuesday, we're going to have young Jean Lee. And then Thursday, I'll tell you about a little later. Yeah, great. So, so yeah, next week, we're going to uh, start off our special guests with uh, Oscar Eustace, uh, the uh, artistic director of the Public Theater, who loves this show and has been a big supporter all the way through. He's going to come on on Monday and hang out with us. And then Tuesday, we're going to have Young Jean Lee, who I'm a big fan of and who is a big friend of mine. We're going to hang out with Young Jean Lee on Tuesday. And then Wednesday is just going to be me and y'all. Thursday is going to be someone special yeah. and me and y'all. So uh, that's how we're going to kind of hop along and uh, hopefully it'll be fun. And if it's not, we'll stop doing it. That's right. And we'll just go back to this because this is fun too. We know this is fun. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, have a Oh, so sorry. Last reminder, sign up by 3 p.m. every single day, Eastern Standard Time, same old as usual. I'll send you a link between 3 and 4.30 p.m. on the day of. Great. Okay. We love you guys. Have a great weekend. We love you. Have Thank a great you, weekend. Okay. Love you. See you Monday. Okay. See you Monday.